Father, in the name of Jesus, we receive this word to be blessed, this message to be blessed. Uh, to those here, to those who will watch by video, who will listen by CD, Father God, we receive the word, Lord God, to bear fruit today. And Lord God, we receive the word to go into our spirit, our minds, our emotions, our bodies, conforming us to the name of Jesus, to the glory of God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have your Bibles, go with me to John chapter 1, verse 1. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. John chapter 1, verse 1. We know these verses, but we're going to read them and just enter into them. Praise God. The Bible says in Colossians 3, let the word of God dwell in you richly. Amen. The word of God can dwell in you 30-fold. It can dwell in you 60-fold or it can dwell in you 100-fold. And according to the degree that it dwells in you will be according to the degree that, that your faith is viable and real. Hallelujah. In John chapter 1, the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Hallelujah. In John 1, 14, the Bible says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to be sharing on manifestation in the context of the Word of God. Most of us know that knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, according to Isaiah 11, these are three of the sevenfold spirit that was on Jesus. There was the spirit of knowledge. There's the Holy Spirit. Then there's the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might. There was uh, a sevenfold spirit on Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And knowledge is knowing the will of God. Understanding is really entering into seeing the heart of God. And then wisdom is how to make things really manifest. How to utilize the knowledge and understanding that we've entered into. And all of us, no matter who you are, where you are, I know that you're desiring to enter into a greater degree of manifestation. Glory to God. And those are the the key variables knowledge so you can know what the will of God is faith begins where the will of God is made known then understanding seeing the heart of God then wisdom learning how to utilize the knowledge and understanding a lot of you have heard the, it's, it's, it's a I don't know if it's a true story or not it's funny but it proves something there were uh, three brothers and uh, they were always vying to get their mother's approval and her attention and all three of them were very successful. And uh, on her birthday, they were trying to outdo one another. And one of them, uh, they uh, bought her a car. Another one, he uh, bought her a, uh, a service where a maid would come in for the whole year every day. And then the other son bought her a bird that could sing and speak in seven different languages. And so they all said that their gift was the best. They're all around the table and they called up. And the one brother, the brother said, Hi, Mom, how'd you like the car? She said, it's amazing. He did seats. She said, I love it. The other brother said, well, do you love the, the maid going to be coming in every day? I, I, she said, you know what? I love that as much as the car. And the third son, he popped up and he said, well, how'd you like that bird? She said, it was delicious. <laughs> God wants us to understand, hallelujah, that it's important, praise God, to enter into wisdom, amen. Glory to God. God wants us to enter into wisdom. And wisdom is understanding that God works first and foremost by his word. Now, a lot of you have heard that before. But we're going to enter into some things, I believe, that will really uh, 
change our lives because we're going to see some things that, that we never saw before regarding the Word of God. One thing I want you to see is in James chapter 1 and verse 18, if you turn there, the Bible says that of His own will, He gave us birth by the Word of God. Hallelujah. So He gave us birth by the Word of God. Anything that God wants to do, he does it by his word. <clears throat> Hallelujah. We've said this many times, but it's so powerful. The Bible is God Almighty in written form. You know, if when you speak to somebody, who you are is conveyed by your words. God has given you the ability to utilize words to convey who you are. If you were engaged to somebody and they were in England and you were in the United States and your name was Tom and you get a Dear John letter, you know you're in trouble. It's amazing what one letter can do. It's amazing what one conversation can do because of the power in words. Words, again, cannot be separated from the individual. Jesus said, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. Your heart, very simply, and your words are synonymous. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. It's talking about his written word. And the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh. You cannot separate Jesus from the written word. They are one in the same. And sometimes I get, I just, I don't understand. Sometimes people will say, well, you know what? The words in red in the Bible, the words that Jesus spoke, that's, uh, you know, that's Jesus. No, all of the Bible is Jesus. Glory to God. But we want to enter into some things today that I believe will help you and help me as well in the context of manifestation. But before we do enter into the context of manifestation, let's go to 2 Peter 1, 3, and 4. Just two books over. 2 Peter 1, 3, and 4. I want to establish the fact, first and foremost, that God works by his word. And then we're going to see this in the context of manifestation. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. I'll tell you, it's so powerful. It says, accordingly... As his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. So God has given us everything that we need in whatever desire. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Hallelujah. So God has called us to glory and virtue. And we're going to really expound and elaborate on what that entails. It says, whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. What's it mean that you and I have been called to glory and virtue? Well, to understand what that entails we have to first define glory and virtue. Glory is the innermost part of God. It is that which God consists of. Virtue and glory are synonymous. In Mark chapter 5, verses 25 to 35, the Bible says that virtue went out of Jesus and went into the woman who had the issue of blood and she was healed accordingly. So glory and virtue are really of that which God consists. So what's it mean for you and I to be called unto glory and virtue? Well, it means that we're called to experience, to partake of the very essence of God. When you're sick, you need to partake of healing virtue. When you're Struggling with impurity, you need to partake of his holiness. 
When you're struggling with fear, you need to partake of the glory of his boldness. When you're having a hard time forgiving, you need to partake of the glory of his love. When you are in a place where it just doesn't seem like things are working and fear is trying to come against you and unbelief, you need to enter into the glory of his faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we're called to partake of his glory and virtue. Then we're called to enter in to be conformed to his image to whereby his glory and his virtue becomes who we are. So that it's not us who live, but Christ who lives in us. The idea, there is so much in that which we just shared. Glory to God. And every one of us, we have a desire to partake of his glory and virtue. Every person listening to my voice, you have a desire to partake of his virtue. Every person on the face of the earth has a desire and a profound need to partake of his virtue. There's no one on the face of the earth that does not need the presence of God, the voice of God, the love of God. You know, many years ago during World War II, there were babies that died by the hundreds. Their parents were... uh, killed and, 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 and from the, the bombs that came from Germany. And the babies were okay. But they were in hospitals. They were taken care of by nurses and doctors. But many of them died. They called them the silent weepers. And there's been many studies in, in, in that context to find out why they die when there was no medical reason for them to, to die. And they came up, the, the, what they came up with in theory was that they were cared for, but never really touched. Cared for, but really never given the love that they needed. You see, they had a need to partake of the glory of another. We have the need to partake of the glory of God. And that's why so many people, are in struggle and and depression and and, and devastation because they're looking everywhere to find life except to Jesus. So often because the connotation they ascribe to Jesus is religion. And people are not going to come to religion. They're going to come to glory and virtue. Amen. And that's what we need to present as a church. But what I want to enter into today is the reality that, glory to God, that it's through the word of God that we partake of that virtue. So many people in their time of need, they pray, but they never enter into the place of using the word to receive. I shared this with somebody yesterday as we were talking, and I said if you were in need of money and someone gave you a check for $100,000, you'd be excited about it. But if you didn't know how to translate that check into money that would meet your needs, it still would do you no good. Catherine Coleman used to tell the story of uh, a man that uh, lived in a shack, very impoverished, died of exposure to the elements, all the time sleeping on a million dollars that were in, uh, literally a million dollars was inside his mattress. It was given to him, I believe, by the Salvation Army. Uh, Unknowingly, somebody uh, gave this mattress away. Evidently, somebody put money in that mattress to hide it. They died, and they're in... uh, Someone who obtained the mattress didn't know it. They gave it away. They gave it to this man, but he never knew. That he had the, is it that money? We need to enter into knowing we have the money, but how to translate it. You've got to cash the check. You've got to sign the check. You've got to cash the check. Amen? We need to know how to partake of the glory of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says by the word of God. Again, so many people are praying For God to come help them rather than saying 
what God has given them to say so the check can be cashed. See, it's one thing to pray, God help me. It's another thing to say, I receive according to your word the provision that I need because you've given me the provision through your word. Glory to God. And someone says, is there a difference? There, there's a profound difference. Go with me, if you would, to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5, verse 25. A lot of us know this story, but it's so powerful. Mark chapter 5, verse 25. Hallelujah. Hmm. A certain woman had an issue of blood 12 years, meaning she just continued to bleed and had suffered many things at, at, at the hands of many physicians, had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment for she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus moved, uh, and immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? He looked around about to see who had done this thing. And the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be healed. Be whole of thy plague. Glory to God. Now, what I want us to see is this. She heard of Jesus. She heard that he was a healer. She heard that we, he was healing all that were oppressed. That the anointing of God was on him according to Acts 10.38, to heal all who were diseased, no matter of what their condition. And what she heard gave faith. It gave her faith, praise God. The Word of God is the only thing that's going to give you faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Hallelujah. When you listen to the Word of God, something, uh, it, there's nothing more exciting. Something happens inside your spirit. An ability to believe, an ability to know, an ability to see, and an ability to receive and partake of God himself becomes realized in your spirit. And that's what faith is. Faith is the knowingness in your spirit that what you are believing, what you are confessing, will come to pass. Faith is seeing the answer even before the answer comes. Faith, again, is, the, is a literal substance in your spirit that causes you to know and see a divine substance that comes through hearing the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So again, we see the word says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, Word becomes flesh. Here's what's exciting. When we start to enter into this, it changes our lives. It really, it changes our lives. Psalm 119, 130 says that the entrance of His Word gives light. It causes you to be able to see the heart of God. I've shared this before, but it bears repetition. A number of years ago, uh, Kathy and I, we lived in one house in town and we rented out another house to college students. And at that time, we were renting out to three students from Nepal, which is a country close to India. And uh, the Lord led me one day just to go over and share the gospel with these young men. They were Buddhists. They never heard the gospel about Jesus. And uh, they were watching uh, studio wrestling. They thought it was real. And uh, I just, uh, and, and I said, I just, I need to talk to you. And I want to talk to you about Jesus. And uh, they said, well, we don't want to hear that. I said, well, you need to let me talk to you. I'm going to raise your rent. So they turned the TV off. And uh, I said, just give me 10 minutes. I said, in 10 minutes, 
you will know that Jesus Christ is God. He came in the flesh in a human body like yours. And through what he did on the cross, you now have the forgiveness of sins and the ability to have a relationship with him, eternal life. And they kind of all, they kind of laughed. And so I said the simple gospel. And at the end of about 10 minutes, I asked them, I said, do you now know that the only way to have your sins forgiven is through Jesus Christ? And one of the guys who's kind of ringleader is a tough young man. He said, you know what? I can honestly say that only Jesus Christ can give me forgiveness of sins. Well, here's a young man, three young men, never heard about Jesus. Buddhist from Nepal. How did that happen? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Here's what's interesting. If Jesus Christ right now would come, right here, right now, in this church or where you are in your living room listening to a CD or watching by DVD, if he would come right now, most likely he would not say anything different to you than it's already written in the word of God. Here's what's exciting. When you read the word of God, it is just like you conversing face to face with Jesus Christ. And you see, most people don't get that. Because again, they see things in the context of religion. When they, when they, when they think about the Bible or church, they think about a religious deal and it's like, I can't understand this. It doesn't relate to me. But when you really see it for what it is, it changes your life. I, I was talking to a professor at a, a, a great Christian college a while ago. And he's head of the religion department. And he teaches Bible and he, he, he confided in me. He said, you know, Pastor, he said, I have a hard time reading the Bible. He said, I, I really don't like to, to read the Bible. I said, well, that's not real good when you're a Bible teacher at one of the foremost Christian colleges in the country. And I said, why? He said, well, he said, every time I read it, I feel like it condemns me. I, I feel like I can't measure up to what it's asking me to do. And he said, I, I just don't, because of that, he said, I, I just struggle with reading the Bible. And I said, you know what? The Bible's not a rule book to condemn you. See, he's, he's reading it in a religious context, even though he is a Christian and loves God and teaches a, a Bible class, head of the religious department. But you see, he's reading it in a religious context rather than seeing the heart of God. I, I said, the Bible's not a rule book to condemn you. The Bible is the heart of God manifested to you. And it began to change his life. It began to change his life, praise God. Amen. So we need to understand that, again, if Jesus Christ appeared to you, He's not going to say anything different to you than what he's already said in his word. Because he is the word. And you can't separate him from his word. Well, here's where it gets exciting. First of all, the word of God brings faith. But second, it enables the eyes of your spirit, the mind of your spirit, the eyes of your spirit... To perceive God. And that might sound strange to many. But David said in Psalm 16 that the world, man, they receive what the world gives. But he said, as for me, when I wake, I behold your face in righteousness. I perceive your presence. Here's an Old Testament man. And then in 2 Corinthians 3 and 4, the Bible says that whatever we do, 2 Corinthians 4, 6, that we're to do it in the face of Jesus Christ. You see, the reason that so many people really uh, don't receive the message of Jesus is because it's shared with them in a religiously wrote fashion, almost in a legalistic fashion, rather than being shared in the face of Jesus. You know, if you experience the presence of Jesus, then that's how you need to share the gospel. Not in a religious fashion, not in a rote legalistic fashion, 
Glory to God. So what happens is we begin to do things in the face of Jesus Christ. And again, that sounds strange to people. I I shared this before, but we used to share a survey with the community and say, do you uh, believe that Jesus Christ is God Almighty? Do you believe that the Bible is the word of God? Do you believe that, you know, uh, that you need to have his blood save you to go to heaven? And, And everybody said, yes, 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 but it really wasn't impacting them. So I came up with a new survey, and it's very simple. I said, in the past week, have you experienced the presence of God? In the past week, have you heard the voice of God? In the past week, have you perceived the face of God? In the past week, have you communed with God? And people look at you like you're you're crazy. But it causes them to think, but you see, this, this is the gospel. It's not about religion. You're trying to get to God through your good works. It's about relationship, amen? So what happens is the word of God gives you faith to know of his heart, and then the word of God enables you to see him. Glory to God. You see, if you get a letter from somebody, and in that letter, you read these words. Your great aunt has gone to be with the Lord. You didn't even know you had a great aunt. And she went to be with the Lord, and she had $100 million, and you're one of the people that she's going to bequeath part of this inheritance to. Well, what would you see? Immediately, you would see yourself going to the reading of the will. You would see yourself entering in to great prosperity. You'd be excited. And you sure would get there. (laughs) Glory to God. And what would happen is the excitement would reign. The words would cause you to see. Glory to God. The written word causes you to see him. Now here's the last thing. And the thing I really want to emphasize in our last part is this. The word of God, according to 2 Peter 1.4, enables you to partake of Jesus. So if you're in a place, for example, where you're just really, really struggling with, 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 with sin, or you're someone's just trying to receive finances or, or healing or whatever you need, the key is entering into the reality that God has given us his word so we can partake of him. Again, the word isn't given so you have something to teach at Sunday school. The word's given that you might know him, see him, and then partake of him. If you get anything today, get that. The word of God's given that you might know him, see him, and partake of him. We just gave the example of the woman with the issue of blood. And we said in James 1.18, that God has caused us to be born again Through the word of God, through the word of truth. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. I have this little booklet here by Dr. Norval Hayes. And he gives a great testimony in here. He is preaching in the context of healing. And on James 5, 14 and 15, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint him with oil praying over him in the name of Jesus and the prayer of faith will save the sick and they committed sins and be forgiven. And there's a testimony in here of a man who had uh, deformed feet, club feet. And they were so severely deformed that he said he wouldn't even never get married because nobody would want to be with him in the context of deformity. And it just caused, uh, you can imagine, real bad self-concept. But as he was listening, he began to see the heart of God. He began to know the will of God, began to see the heart of God. And then Dr. Norval Hayes said something interesting. He said, the wisdom of God, the partake of God is his word. Romans 10, 9 says this, that if you will believe in your heart 
and then confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, thou shalt be saved. See, a lot of times we want to make things so much more difficult than they are. Amen? And we want to say, God, I have to fast for 40 days and got to do this. I got to clean myself up. I got to be this, this, and this. And God's saying, you know what? That's not the way it is. I've done what needs to be done. I just need you to receive it. And this man, for the first time in his life, said, you know what? I really saw that to receive the healing I needed, he said, I've been praying for, I believe the man was about 41 years old. I've been praying, you know, for, for 35, 36 years, ever since I've been five years old. But now I got it. And he, he said, I went to bed just confessing that God loved me so much that he made provision for me to be healed. I, I began to see his heart. And I began to confess that according to his word, James 5, 14 and 15, because he was anointed with oil, I'm healed. He began to confess that by the straps of Jesus, he was healed. He began to see it. Thank God for it. Get excited about it. Glory to God. And he said he just couldn't stop saying it. You know, when you really understand something good, can I tell you something? You can't stop saying it. If you knew you were going to get a million dollars again from your great aunt, I guarantee you, man, you'd be telling somebody. So all through the night, until he fell asleep, he just was confessing. Lord, I just praise you that according to your word, how, according to your word, of James 5, 14 and 15, 1 Peter 2, 24, I'm healed. And again, the word for confession in the Greek is the word homologos. Logos means written word of God. Homo means the same. It means saying the same thing that God says. And you see, that's what it's about. And why would you want to say anything differently anyways? As if we would know better than God, amen? God simply wants us to agree with him. He doesn't need our ability, but he does need our agreement. You see, if someone says, you know what? I'm too unworthy to be accepted by Jesus. You don't know what I did. Well, that sounds like humility, but really it's pride because you're saying something different than what Jesus says. Really. Humility is saying the same thing that Jesus says. Pride is saying something different, whether it's through a sense of unworthiness or thinking you know better than Jesus. So make a long story short, this man was just fell asleep praising God. And he woke up. He didn't feel any different. But he went and looked down at his feet. He had two brand new feet. And he had never run because he could not. He never ran, ever. And he just put out, got dressed. And before work, he just began to run and run and run. Glory to God. See, that's exciting to me. Because again, we started out, we initiated this message by saying that the keys are knowledge, understanding, and then Wisdom. We obtain knowledge through the word of God. We obtain understanding through seeing the heart of God. And we obtain wisdom by entering into acting on the word of God. So I, I would encourage us today, those of us who are here, those listening by CD, watching by DVD, glory to God. I, I tell you, God is so gracious. I really don't think we really understand the glory of the power, the magnificence, really are the written word of God. And, and Satan will come against it. He'll say, well, you know, it's not going to work for you. He'll say this or say that. But I'm here to tell you something. You've been born again. If you accepted Christ, you've been born again through the word of God. And if the word of God, just think about this. I'm going to close with this. If the word of God was powerful enough to cause God to give you the new birth, isn't it powerful enough to give you victory in your life and cause you to be whole? Amen? That's just common sense, isn't it? The greatest miracle that the world will ever know, that you will ever know as a Christian, is the new birth. 
When God takes out of you the heart of stone and puts in you the heart of his son. When God takes out your evil nature and puts in supernaturally by the wind of his spirit, the DNA of God, causing you to be his legitimate son. That's the greatest miracle that anybody will ever enter into. Again, how did that come about? Through the word of God. Through you confessing the scripture. To as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become children of God. John 1.12 that if you believe in your heart through the word of God that you heard and will confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, the only way to heaven, you will be saved. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Boy, I, I just sense God right now. I, I, I just sense God big time. And, and we're going to close in prayer. We do this every service. If anybody here listening by CD, watching by DVD, if if you, you, just, you just know you're not right with God. Well, I, I'm here to tell you something. It's not coincidence that you're hearing this. God's heart is towards you. He's not here to condemn you. You're not listening to this but in your living room or hospital bed or wherever you are. To be condemned, but to be loved. And if you're not right with God, we always do this. Just just bow your head and just say, just to yourself, just repeat this prayer with me to say, Lord Jesus, on the basis of your word, I believe that you came to forgive me, to cleanse me, and to be one with me, to be my Savior and Lord. I give myself to you right now, according to your word in Jesus' name. If you said that, he came to you right now. Glory to God. But I want us as well, just right now, just to enter into some things regarding his word. All of us have needs. All of us have struggles at times. There's no one that's better than anybody else. There's nobody that's loved of God more than anybody else. We're all in this together. Religion separates people and there's, you know, uh, there's upper echelon and lower echelon and caste systems and this and that. Christianity, the Bible said there's neither male nor female. Uh, there, there's neither bone nor free. Uh, we're all in this together. We're all equally loved. But all of us, we all have struggles. God does not condemn us in our struggles. He comes to us. When we have a need, when we're sick in body, that's hard. He doesn't condemn us and say, you're sick because you did this wrong. He comes to us and says, you know what? I'm here to lift you up. If you're struggling with sin, he doesn't condemn you. And throw a rock at you. A stone at you. He lifts you up. When you're struggling financially. He lifts you up. But how does he do it? First and foremost through the written word of God. Again. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The word became flesh. And I want to encourage us today. That you know what? All things are possible. Because the word of God came to this earth. And he came to die for us that we might have life in great abundance. It's a time to rejoice. It's a time to be free from religion, to be free from unworthiness and condemnation. It's a time, really, to start acting on the word as never before. It's a time to come to Jesus his way. And to say, God, you said it, I believe it, that settles it. And when we enter into that, I I I'll tell you, the most amazing things are going to happen. The most amazing things are going to happen. Simply because we've agreed with God. And that's all he needs to do miracles in our lives. Every minute of every hour of every day. Glory to God. Glory to God. I, I just, uh, I just want to close in prayer. And uh, I had the name, I, I felt the Lord name, spoke to me the name David. And I don't know if that means anything to anybody, but maybe you're praying for someone. And, but I felt like I, that God has spoke that name. You know, we, a lot of times, remember, God's has got to do that, the gifts of the Spirit, the word of knowledge. But uh, let's just pray to close. Father, we just thank you in Jesus' name. 
that you didn't come into the world to condemn the world. You came to the world to save it. And God, we just thank you so much that when we seem to walk away, you run, you run towards us. Like with the prodigal son. God, help us to see even in the midst of so much hurt, God, we're called to be free from that hurt and help those who are hurting. Lord, help us to understand through your word, your written word, how awesome you are. Then to enter into the reality of it experientially. The blind to see, the deaf to hear, the crippled to walk. But most importantly, for us to be able to hear your voice, experience your presence, and the fellowship with you and with one another in an awesome way. Because God, it's all about relationship. All about relationship. And Lord, help us not to enter in, Lord God, to religious spirits, but to enter into relationship as we never have with you and each other. In Jesus' name.